Okay, then welcome back everyone. I hope you all got caffeinated enough so we can start into the afternoon session, which is actually the really good hands-on session here um, of today's course. And we'll start with reading, uh, correctly reading, efficiently reading scientific papers. Of course, you all have read scientific papers or anybody who never read a paper? Yeah, everything else would have surprised me. But I think um, there are still tips and tricks um, we can provide to you to read more efficiently. You read more papers quickly, basically, or, but you know, not quick and dirty, or in a way quick and dirty, but not dirty uh, in the sense that you don't understand what it's about or whether it's relevant, but actually read it efficiently, meaning you still know whether it's relevant and what you need to know, but fast and efficiently. So, I think all of you are familiar with the typical structure of a scientific paper or anybody who's never heard of an abstract. I think you all read, uh, you all wrote a, a bachelor thesis, so you know that. And this structure can also be, um, can be used quite effectively for speeding up the reading process. Anybody an idea how, some suggestions? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, start with the abstract, look at the diagrams, conclusion, not bad, yes. And other ideas? Let's start the other way around. What do you think typically interests you the most about a paper? Hmm? The conclusion. The conclusion. And why? Uh, because you get to know what the activity that it takes in the paper. Okay. Because you have a different type of paper and that's the conclusion. Mm -hmm. What, when you would have to, to put it in words, what is in the conclusion typically? I mean, now I already have it here, so don't, don't look at yeah. this. <laughs> Um, in, in one sentence you can say in the conclusion is nothing new. Everything that's in the conclusion should have been said before in the paper. That, that's really a, a rule of, it's just another rule, but it's, it's good practice. Yeah, so what it's not always adhered to. So sometimes people, you know, mix up the discussion and the conclusion section. Discussion is there to, to introduce also new ideas or, you know, new thoughts about whatever your data, for example. Um, pointed you to, but conclusion is really nothing new. It's really just like a summary of the key takeaway points. Yeah? So this is also something that not everybody is, um, is aware about, that there should be no new information in the conclusion. But as you correctly said, really put nicely the takeaway points onto the research question, give a summary of you know, what has been found, and so on. Why it's important, um, which other applications this might have. Um, I think the other sections should be rather, rather familiar to you. Yeah, I mean, introduction, of course, you introduce what you're actually, which field you're in, um, emphasize, emphasize why it's important, why should somebody read your paper, why should somebody care about the problem you're addressing, yeah? Why is it the hard problem that you're addressing? Um, yeah, related work, I think, is self-explanatory method, probably also. Evaluation, well, if you did, experiments, you describe them there, and what, what was the result. Hmm? Um, you see, you get the slides, and you have the links here for, for all these templates. You can also check them out. Um, if you have some, still some, some small question marks, where exactly put some content in your, in your paper, in your thesis, um, this is a very good help. And even, and this will be later on, the even more extensive resource where it, Basically, a real paper is annotated with what goes where. Um, I will provide this to you. This is too long to cover here in the course. So, but now we want to use this, and you, you, you mentioned quite correct um, parts of it already, um, this structure, which almost every scientific paper adheres to for efficient reading, meaning finding the information that we need to find uh, quickly. And this is a proposal. It's also not set in stone. You can do it differently, of course, but I would recommend that you follow um, this approach or a similar approach which is adapted from a really cool and short paper by Kershaw. Um, this is also open access freely available. You can also check out the original paper and it consists of a four, uh, 
four-step pass, a four-pass approach, um, how to read a paper. Yeah? And this we will briefly um, introduce to you, and then you will also do at least one or two of these steps as an exercise. Yeah? So what does it look like? Well, the first one, and this is really quick, as you said, read the abstract. Yeah? Um, it's one to two minutes, read the title, read the abstract, or better, browse the abstract, not two minutes can be hard to read really the abstract completely, um, and just decide, you know, is this paper relevant at all, or does it do something completely different to what I'm interested in? Yeah? So title, maybe keywords, and a glimpse over the abstract, really short. Yeah? Um, if you do that, and for a more extensive literature review, like for a thesis, I recommend you to do something like this, like a table. Um, what are actually the points that make a paper relevant to my research question or not? So define criteria, yeah, and then systematically put in papers that you found, and um, cross off, also cross off those that are you know, not relevant, and, and the categories why they are not relevant. Yeah? So make up your mind of what, what makes a relevant paper, what makes a paper relevant to my research question? Create such a table. I also give you an example later on. Um, and then systematically decide, hey, for this and this reason, I don't know, it, had, it, it does something else. Yeah? So short comment, okay, it does something completely different, it addresses a different field and so on. So you can systematically trace, ah, okay, I really covered the most important literature, but systematically you're not go in and you know, pick there and there and there and there. Um, Depends on your problem whether this is really necessary or not. Uh, for a term paper where it's really about surveying the state of the art, that's maybe more relevant than if you have a very specific problem and you know there are only whatever five or ten papers um, relevant to your field. Um, so yeah. But if you have such a table, then the goal of this first impression step would be make a make a tick or cross or whatever entry in your table to say yeah this is relevant or not. Okay, yeah, that's what I just explained to you, specify inclusion, exclusion criteria. Um, next step, and this is the step we are going, the two steps that we're going to do, uh, is the so-called bird's eye view. Um, this is more expensive, you see it's about 10 to 20 minutes, so you should already not do it with too many papers. Yeah? So the goal is to ideally kick out a lot of papers of the many, many, many that you will find during the first step. Because yeah, even investing 10 or 20 minutes for a paper, if you have a lot of papers, is, is quite some effort already. Yeah? So see it really as a filtering process. The goal is to decide um, after this step whether you want to invest even more time and read the paper entirely. Yeah? Because you won't read the paper entirely. What you will do is you carefully read the abstract, like really carefully read the abstract, and then use the structure, the section headings to know, okay, does it adhere to the structure? What is where? Um, and, and see where is the research contribution section. Yeah, that can be the conclusion, can be maybe innovative methodology, whatever you know, the research contribution of this paper is. Um, browse the methods because it's important to understand how results have been, have been achieved, yeah, what, what exactly the experiments were and so on. And as you correctly said, really nice, um, Look at the tables, figures, graphics. Yeah? They provide a lot of information in a condensed form, and they also help you to spot, very often help you to spot spotty research. If you see tables, you know, where you, where you can already, or, or, or graphs where you see there is no unit, you know, there's sloppy, sloppy tables and graphs, you can already, uh, maybe not so relevant. Yeah? Or very often you also see just hard technical errors in terms of, of bars or, or um, tables because he's, he said this 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 categorization or this measurement they don't they don't fit the data or not fit them well or it's not appropriate yeah no details really just to get an idea of what it's about and then of course also correctly said already read the conclusion because there the authors did the hard work and actually or should do the hard work not every paper is written well unfortunately but should do the hard work to tell you hey this is relevant this is interesting about our paper. Um, last step, glance over the references. I don't think you have to do this for our, for our uh, example case, but when you actually do it for your project, do that because it helps you 
to find and mentally tick off or tick off in your table the, the important previous um, papers you should be aware about, yeah, that, that, that you just that you really surveyed the state of the art. Yeah? Okay. If a paper is still in the running after this step, so it, you did that and say, oh yeah, they really do interesting things, they have interesting results, they claim, at least in the conclusion, to have really important, relevant results, then, um, okay, sorry, one step early, what should, what, what should you be able to, um, what should be your result after this bird's eye view? Well, you should be, uh, you should be able to answer these five Cs, yeah, so what, what, what type of paper is it? Is it an, uh, quantitative research paper, so did they really do experiments and, you know, found something out, or is it more a theoretic paper that does a proof or theoretic um, uh, concept? Is it a literature review, so just a paper that looks at other research? What is the context? So that's also why you tick off the references, so which other papers does it relate to? Which niche of my research field does it fall in? Yeah, so the context this paper is in, um, maybe which approach, which experimental approach did they use? Is this approach relevant to my problem or not? It really depends a bit on the research question that you have. Correctness, to whatever degree this is possible after this still cursatory um, reading. Yeah. But as I said, there are some markers like sloppy figures, um, weird tables and so on. You can already tell, uh, maybe, maybe not the most highly quality paper. Yeah? Um, and of course, contributions, which you should find in the conclusion section, and clarity. Is the paper written well? I think this used to be a really good quality criteria. Not, not perfect, but quite good. It will decrease. Why will it decrease? Chat GPT. <laughs> More people will be able to write um, really well-written, like linguistically really well-written paper. They can still be crap. So I would say the last step is decreasing in value. If it's cold, please, please close, yeah? Okay. <laughs> you look like this. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but still, for older works, I think it's valid. Um, it's, of course, not 100%, but in general, especially in the English-speaking community, which you will hear in the next workshop in more detail, is uh, writing is thought made visible which is a problem for not native speakers of English, because if your peer reviewer is a native English speaker, they have, this, they have this in their brain. If somebody not writes well, they assume, oh, he didn't think well. Huh? It's, 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 not, it's, it's unfortunate, but it's like that. Um, and yeah, but more often than not, it's also true. If, 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 if the author cannot convey their results in a way that you understand, maybe not linguistically perfect, but at least it's clear enough so you understand, they may not have very good results, because otherwise they could have presented them better. Okay, so now we are, if a paper is still in the running after the bird's eye view, then, and this you should only do for really papers that um, are interesting to, to really interesting to your research, you really read the paper. Only then you go and really read everything in the paper. Yeah? You really want to grasp the content. You read the complete paper, um, of course, if you do it directly following the other steps, then you have written certain things, uh, have re read certain things already. You don't need to reread it, typically. If there's a bit of time in between, then you may need to reread it. Depends. Um, yeah. But ignore really time consuming, difficult things at this point, like proofs. No, not ignore, but at least you know, don't try to, to, to dive too deep into it, check whether everything is correct and so on. They, they can really. Um, that really costs you a lot of time otherwise. Carefully look at the figures and graphics. Yeah. As I said, helps you to identify sloppy works. Here are some, um, some of those questions you should ask to identify possibly sloppy work. Yeah. So is everything explained in the text? Mm -hmm. Are necessary, readable? Yeah, a lot depends on, of course, the type of data, whether the chart is actually uh, suitable, whether um, yeah, the axles are labeled, or whether you need to guess what is actually shown in the plot, and so on. Yeah? And now, you take notes. Yeah? So before, you may or may not take notes. Um, if you, of course, if you find something in the, in the bird's eye view that is, you know is totally relevant to your question, then you can note it down already. But here is really the, 
the time when you would also do your PDF annotations or notes otherwise. No? And you should try to find unaddressed questions, research gaps. Yeah? What it still needs to be done after this paper? Since it's very relevant to your own paper, you know, hopefully it still leaves something or, you know, that, 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 that you could address. Um, yeah, again, references, keep them in mind. Which ones should you, chill, should you still read? Which ones do you know already? Okay, what should you be able to answer after this step? Well, you should understand the paper, you should be able to summarize it, huh? and also present supporting evidence from the paper um, to, as part of this summary. For um, the large majority of papers, you can typically stop at this step. There will be very, very few papers that are so relevant that we go on. We will see which papers these are, but let's say for a typical uh, term paper, also for a typical thesis, this is enough. You understand papers well enough after this step. Yeah? Of course, there might be cases where you, know, you don't achieve it. It can be your fault, can be the author's fault. What do I mean? Well, it can be your fault in the sense you just don't know enough yet about the topic, about whatever. You just don't understand things because you're lacking knowledge. Or you don't understand things because the authors did a sloppy job. Yeah? So you have two options. You, you know, go and learn more, come back, or you say the authors did a crappy job, I'm not investing the effort. That's, that's a decision you need to make then. Hmm? Um, yeah, as I said, pretty much two options. <laughs> or three options, though. It's basically translate to two options. Either you keep going now or later, or you just discard the paper because something is not understandable, wrong about it. So, if, if you really have core papers that sort of maybe are a prerequisite for your own work, use a methodological approach that is so relevant to your own work that you maybe want to use yourself, yeah, or maybe you want to validate their findings or compare to their findings and so on, then you should really go to this last step, and this can be really time consuming, um, to, to really understand the other paper on a level that you could almost re-implement it, at least mentally. Yeah? That you really understand everything they did, checked every proof, and can, can really trace it back and say, hey, this is correct, this is not correct, this is missing, um, this is still an open problem, and so on. So imagine you would need to write that other paper, and you should know enough about, you don't need to do it, but you should know enough about that you could basically do it. Yeah? So really understand all the content, identify and challenge every assumption the authors make, because that might be relevant to you. Yeah? If you say, hey, I want to use their method, you should check whether the assumptions the, the authors made actually hold true, or whether they, I don't know, they missed something and you know, that falsifies then the approach. Um, and then think about how you would present the ideas, because um, you might even find a better way, of it, whether it's when you say, hey, I would present it in exactly the same way, can't improve it, it's typically a sign for a very good paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as I said, you should really understand the paper in the sense that you could almost reconstruct it um, and really identify its strong and its weak points. Mm -hmm. And also be able to pinpoint maybe assumptions that are not, not proven well or not, um, yeah, sourced well, maybe they miss citations to related work that you already know that they missed or left out intentionally, and so on. Methodological issues, so you really should understand this paper really, really well after this step. But yeah, of course, depending on the paper and the length and the complexity and so on, this can be really long, up to five hours. Uh, so you can only invest this time for absolutely crucial papers. Okay, so questions so far? Okay. Of course, at some point we, we need to take notes. Showed you some steps during the process where this is appropriate. Um, there's a nice saying, the faintest writing is better than the best memory. It's definitely true for me. I don't know how good your memory is, but I need to write down everything. So always take notes while reading, yeah? right? really reading. We already mentioned how to 
um, best manage your ideas and nodes, I recommend a reference manager. We saw a very good option. If you're not the reference manager type, for whatever reason, if you're more a mind map type, I can recommend an open tool, Coggle, that is very nice also to collaborate with others. I think I have a picture, yeah, it looks like this. So it's, yeah, it's, it's a mind mapping tool, very easy to import and export things. Um, can recommend it. There are tons of other mind mapping tools, of course, out there. Also uh, tons of other structured note taking tools. Um, I recommend Reference Manager, but if you want something else, why not? There is, of course, also um, Notion. Do you know Notion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So maybe tell us what you like about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Uh, we, have, we also have group members who use it quite a lot. Up to you, really, what, whatever you like. I'm, I'm the reference manager guy. For me, that's enough. But yeah, I see also the, um, the upsides of Notion, of course. Yeah, totally fine. There are other. I would recommend to you to have something with the with the cloud support. You know, like like Evernote, or so that you cannot lose your notes. That that that's terrible. You know. Either have that or have really good backups, but, but never lose your notes. <laughs> okay. So um, we saw this one option that I showed you earlier with you know, PDF annotations, different colors, um, which I really like in Zotero, that they offer you this, this, this possibility so easily. Default out of the box, you can just pick a color. One option um, that, for example, Corinna, she put this slide here, uses um, herself is you might, for example, use a color for the approaches, models, algorithms, yeah? research objectives, um, data sets, blue, evaluation methodology, orange, or whatever. You know, make up your system and, and, and use it. It's pretty cool. Okay. Then, I would say, there's enough talk. Let's, let's try it. Um, ideally, you already have a topic, you already, it might not be your thesis topic, but maybe some, some other work you're working on. Get a paper that you need to read for this right now and um, try to do the first and second step. So, well, when you already have it, you probably decided it's relevant, then maybe you can skip the first step, but then do the bird's eye view, yeah? So please, um, I will open the, the slide again, but try to answer these five C's, category, context, and so on. Um, if you don't have any paper that you can think of right now that is interesting, why not try one of ours? I don't know. Up to you. <laughs> um, yeah. This is, I go back to the slides so you actually have the, what you should be able to answer. Okay, then yeah, I would say at most 20 minutes as we, as we said in, on the slide. 